Good morning, good morning, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. How are you today? It is Teresa from Teresa's Spot for Art, back for day five, five um, of 31 Days of Halloween. So how is everyone? Morning time today. Um, I'm going to turn you guys around. We will get started and we will chat as we go. So good morning, good morning, everyone. I had this, I guess, somewhat Victorian box. It's a heart. Okay. We are upcycling this box for Halloween. A heart may not be, well, it could be, but a heart may not be, you know, the best shape. But we're just doing an upcycle. I have these really cool napkins. There's a pack of 24 Halloween napkins from the dollar, dollar and a quarter tray. And I had this cute Victorian box. I collect these boxes. This is what the pattern looked like. I collect these boxes, um, if you notice, sometimes in... Um, the back of me in my art room i have multiple uh supplies different craft supplies in boxes and they're stacked up behind me on my work table anyway this one you don't have to base coat it depending on your box you don't have to base coat it i base coated it because when you take away take the plies apart when you take the sheets apart from the napkins the napkins are very translucent and i wanted to be able to really see this design without the box and all these pink florals coming through. So that was the first thing. So anyway, I have my Mod Podge. I have a little bit of water and let me see, a tiny brush. I have a brush for my Mod Podge. Then I have the napkin that I'm gonna use for the main picture for the top of my box. <clears throat> and then I have these other, these are craft papers I made with my jelly pad. There's going to be a video as part of 31 Days of Halloween on how to make these papers. But if you grab the supply list and the um, download, I have created some simple papers for you to just print out if you like and use them for your upcycle. If you want, it's up to you. Otherwise, you can use tissue paper, craft paper, papers you made, napkins, um, pretty much material, lace, ribbon, whatever you want on here that you have laying around in your stash that you want to use. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come to my napkin, and sometimes napkins are two or three ply. This one actually says two ply, and because I'm reading it, and I know, I know it's two ply. So I only have to pull the one part away from the other part, and that was fairly easy. Sometimes napkins are really pressed together. I'm going to save this because I might make this into some kind of tissue paper, um, print it up like I did with this. We'll see. So I'm not going to throw this away. You can. Up to you. Okay. Then I'm going to lay this out because I want to see most of it and see where it'll work the best. So I'm just going to now cut this one square from my napkin. That's all we're going to use right now. I might use the rest for the other sides, but for now, that's it. I'm going to line it up. Let's have that spider right there. Let's see if I'm going to be able to do that. Get that spider right there in the middle. And then we'll worry about those spaces later. Okay. So I'm going to put out a little bit of my Mod Podge. And you can use any kind a varnish for this that you like. I know there's a gildan and a golden and some people water down Elmer's glue and it's all just up to you. So I have my brush. I'm going to dip in a little bit of my Mod Podge and I'm just going to put in some here. Now my box, I base coated white. You can, you don't have to, it's up to you. I'm going to take my napkin. I'm going to see if I can get my spider where I wanted it and make sure he's right in the middle there. And then I just flap this side down. But I didn't put Mod Podge all over the whole thing. I just wanted to have a little bit. And now I'm going to do it as I go. You want a very light coat because these napkins are thin. I'm pressing down gently. We're going to try and not have bubbles or wrinkles, but you know what? If we do, so be it. It's an upcycled box. 
and we're not going to get worried about that. I'm just tapping as I go. And then I'm going to put the last bit of here and then fold over. Okay, napkins are a little thinner. Okay, so I'm gonna get, let me put out some more. I'm gonna get my Mod Podge now and I'm going to gently go over the top, working out towards the edges to get rid of any bumps or wrinkles. I'm not really that concerned with wrinkles in this one because it's Halloween, it's going to add to the effect. But I do want to still work from the inside out. But you want to be very gentle with this. This is a really soft brush. It's a paint brush, but now I only use it for my decoupage. And you want to be really gentle and have a soft brush because you don't want to rip your tissue paper. Okay? So I'm just going to leave that now to dry and I'm going to go to my box. <clears throat> so we can use more napkin, which I might do, or we can use some of my papers here. And there's two ways of doing this, right? You can, I like this section right here. You can rip your paper. I like ripping it. Usually I won't use scissors on this kind of paper. I want to rip it and tear it. I don't want the edges to be all nice, nice and neat. Okay. And I'm just going to start lining these up. I'm going to do the same thing. Put a little bit on there. Now this paper is a little thicker. But you still should be a little bit gentle with it. And I'm just adding in and doing a section at a time as I go around. Like with acrylic painting, decoupage and collage is a layering effect. And you can keep layering and putting on as many layers as you want. So now I'm going to go over the top again. Make sure all my edges are down. Sometimes when we're dealing with heavier paper, we want to use a heavier or a thicker um, Mod Podge. And I'm using Mod Podge in the generic sense, like Kleenex. I am actually using Mod Podge, but there are a lot of varnishes that you can use for this. And then sometimes you want to use something just a little bit heavier bodied. Another way you can rip your paper is to get a little cup with water and a wet brush and wet your paper. Just come in here, almost paint around the design you want with the brush. And then come back and it'll rip a little bit easier and have a nice edge there. See how nice that just is coming out? It's wet. I used my brush and I can just come in here and tear it, okay? So it's up to you what you wanna do. I'm gonna put that piece right there. And we're just gonna keep layering and adding. You can see how some of my box here is showing. We can fix that or we can leave it because when we put our top on, it's not going to matter. You're not going to see it, but I could come back in with some ink. I'm going to rip this. I could come back in with some paint. I can come back in with a paint pen. I can come back in with other papers and paint over that. So whatever I want to do, put down that end. Look how cool this is already looking. And I'm just going to keep going all around. 
get me some water here. Oh, wrong way. Huh? And like with anything else, you can make this as full or as layered or as involved or as detailed as you want. There's no rules when it comes to art and creating. The only rules there are, well, I, yeah, there is rules. Sometimes you have to be careful about what you mix and match, but really there's no rules there either. If you like it, if you like it, I love it. It's all good. Okay, ripping out this section here. And even this little piece ripped, but I'm gonna keep it. I'm just gonna mod podge it down. Just be careful where you stick your box because it's sticky and now I put it on the ground. Let me see. Let's just rip this bottom part off a little bit. It's a little white and I wanna get rid of that. Okay, scraps. I'm gonna come back up to my project. Start layering in a little paint here. I mean, a little Mod Podge. Okay. And we're just going to keep going. there and we're just gonna close up this gap now this with the curve and stuff I might because this is thicker paper and because it's a curve and I want to get it in this corner I'm just using the back of this pen I could have used a paintbrush and I'm just pressing down. Again, you could not do this with a napkin, but when you're using craft paper, scrapbook paper, you can do this because the paper is much more um, thick and easy to manipulate. I'm going to open up my napkin. I'm going to cut it into the patterns because this is it is four squares of the same pattern napkins sometimes napkins are four squares of the same pattern sometimes they just have a main square pattern and then the rest of the other three squares will be like complementary but these have all four squares on them and I'm going to where's my little brush here's my little brush here's my water I like this part you know, I like this part with the spider and the spider web. And I'm using my water. I'm also going to come around the edge here so I can tear it. Okay. And I'm going to gently, gently, gently rip my napkin where I put the water here. 
really, we don't have to be that gentle. It was a pack of, I think, what, 24? How many napkins were in this pack? 24 napkins for $1.25. I think if I mess one up, it'll be okay. But you never know. You know, us crafters, we're always hoarding our supplies and whatnot, right? And I don't want this straight edge here, so I wet it. And now I'm just coming in here, and I'm just ripping off this edge. I could wet this one again. I'm just ripping it off because I want my edge. Let me get rid of these before they get stuck in something. To be kind of random like that and not flat. And I'm going to get my Mod Podge. Lay down my spider. And then continue. keep using if I want to I could use these little trims here um, here's another one I don't know I don't know that I'm gonna do that but I'm just letting you know what you can do this one down here I'm gonna cut out by itself we'll use this somewhere because overall this section right here is way too big so I can use that for something use this bottom trim for something And then I can use this part somewhere. sanding box here you can use an emery board you can use a finger sander and I'm just gonna come in here and pulling down and it's just ripping off the paper see that giving it a nice rough edge but it's not ripping it off the front and I'm just going around holding it pulling down and then getting the paper off. I don't think we need to worry about saving every little bit. Look how cool that is. Okay. So <clears throat> now we're going to come back and see what we're going to do with our edges. I'm just going to start layering in all over all this random edge piece. Okay. Got some there. That was one of the books. 
Got so, oh, this is the top of the spider. Got some there. I might have to get a new napkin, and we shall see. So, when I Mod Podge, I'm pulling down the top, and then I'm adding in this little bit of piece here. Okay, so I'm to have a nice soft brush and to be gentle especially when working with napkins because they are so easy to rip okay so there is our lid now I have out some white paint I have out a little bit of black paint I am going to get one of my pouncing brushes Try to get all my edges off. If you don't get these edges off, they might end up catching and working their way and pulling off at some point. I'm gonna get my pouncer brush. I'm gonna pounce it completely in white. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black. I'm gonna pounce that in too, make a little bit of a gray. And now I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna pounce around 
this whole edge because my napkin on the two sides and the bottom didn't completely cover. So now I'm lightly pouncing in here with some gray on this pouncer brush. It's called a scruffy brush. And now you can even see. I'm going to do the same thing around the edge because where there was white spots and I didn't completely fill in, I'm just pouncing in here and making it a more uniform look. All the spots that were a little bit white where I didn't totally cover because I was just using scraps, I'm now pouncing in. And you can use a paintbrush for this. You, the same way I'm using this pouncer, you can use a paintbrush and pounce it in. That part got a little dark. So I just wiped it off and come back. Okay. So we did around our edges. And I'm going to go to now to my box up here where I said there's going to be white, but we didn't care about that. And the lid will cover it anyway. But now I'm just pouncing in here with this paint. I could add a little bit of purple if I wanted to, just to bring up the purple in the box. Some paper we used. So the bottom has some purple in it, and just by pouncing in some gray. But now that I bring in the purple, it looks more like it fits. And I'm not just pouncing in this band up here of white and gray and black. I'm still being pretty gentle with it. Oh, a little bit of purple. This is where I started. And if you want, you can be random in here too. Just adding in some of this purple and white, not too much. And I think that's good. I think, I think I like it. I think I like it. I love it. Okay. So, let me turn you guys around, and here we go. So, here is the bottom of our box. The paint is a little wet, but I'm going to put the lid on anyway and show you guys. Here's our lid. Here is our box. We should let it dry a little bit more, but how cool is that? Thank you guys for joining me. I will be back at 10 a.m. tomorrow for day six of 31 days of Halloween.